Hi, this is Pat Love back with Pat's Two Cents here with a phone conversation with Mark. Brother Mark is going to share what God has done for him and how he had to navigate through his scars from the past. Because see, some of you go through a lot of hurt. Some of you have been through some really cruel stuff and you don't know what to do with it. You're trying to drink it down. You're trying to smoke it away. You're trying to pop pills as pain management. But baby, none of that manages pain. If you want a pain manager, God is the only one that can remove it once and for all. Even if you remember, the pain does not accompany the memory. So listen to Mark as he shares some of his experiences that God had to heal him from when he was young. Okay, thank you so much, Mark. Take it away, Charlie. Thank you, Pat. Thank you, Pat. All right. Um, well, um, my name is Mark. I'm uh, I'm 39 years old, and uh, so before all this happened, um, back in I would say I was about five years old. I was a little kid running back and forth across the street with my best friend. His name is Tiger. God rest his soul. And um, you know, we were little kids living in uh, the projects back home in Texas in Corpus Christi, and we, did, we, we ran everywhere, we played everywhere. But anyways, uh, the point is, my, my best friend and I, we were running across the street and there's an, it's an off of, it's, this, this road is off of a main street and this uh, Camaro, I can still remember it, it was Trans Am, had the bird on it, a gold one, came flying around the corner as I'm running across the street. And I see it and I feel myself being pushed forward. And as I'm being pushed forward, I look beyond and I see my friend get hit by the car. And, oh! Um, I remember that, you know, the pain that was with that, you know, gave was my heart to the God, put your Lord to God, and he took it, he took all that. But, as we this is what comes to mind for me to share with the world, and, um, growing up after that, not even after that same place, um, I seen my mother jump out of my window, you know, when I was about six years old. Your mother? Uh, she's trying to get away from this abusive person. Oh. And I ran into the window. I saw her. I heard her falling down. I hear her click. She hit the clothesline on the way down. And I sat in that window crying my heart out. See my mom being all the way by the ambulance. You know, and it was, for me growing up, it was one traumatic experience after another. And um, shortly after that, she ended up, when she was in the hospital, she, uh, wasn't able to leave because she ended up getting hepatitis from ma. Uh, she had hepatitis from using needles. My father had left her because she was uh, using, uh, running around doing stuff that she shouldn't be doing. And my father was like, that's it. He washed his hands and walked away. Well, we were left watching this going on. Um, you know, and so my mom was an organized uh, crime down there. Uh, they call it the Mexican Mafia, the Latin whatever you want to call it, um, Lamy, but um, that's all I knew growing up. Drugs, right. guns, seeing all this stuff going around, and um, you know, a lot of people, unfortunately, a lot of kids can relate to this when they're growing up, you know, and um, my mother set my father up to get killed, you know. Uh, mm. my mother, he was supposed to come pick us up. We went to go see my dad, and we saw these two guys walk, on him, walk up on him, and they just kicked it off with him and started off with him and he ends up uh, fighting with these guys and they have knives and his arms get sliced up his back, his chest. My older brother and I run out there trying to help him um, at the age of about five and six. Oh. And uh, she, my brother grabs his wallet and he goes hiding in the storm gutter next to the street watching this happen. And um, I'm running inside trying to get bush and I was trying to run outside to help my dad. Trying to give him something. My mom's picking us up one by one as we run out the back door and she's trying to stop us from getting there. Um, he almost died. He drove himself to the hospital and uh, got there to the ICU and flopped out on the side of lots of blood and everything else that happened. Then uh, shortly after that, um, that's when the incident with the window and my mother jumped out, but he tried to blow us up. You know, I remember that clear as day. She put us around the, uh, the oven, she had a stove on, and she was going to fill up the place with gas. And uh, my dad was coming to get us. He was a city bus driver, 
and he could smell gas. For some reason, she wasn't not opening the door. Uh, she wasn't opening the door, and my father was knocking and knocking and knocking. Finally, he kicked the door in because he could smell the gas. And as soon as he did, he could feel the pressure of the gas flow through his clothes. So much was building up in there. And he ran in the kitchen. Um, my older brother and I and my little sister and my little brother around the oven. I was ready. She's ready to strike a match. And, uh, so it was a big court battle and everything going on. She was facing some prison time. And she was like, I can't have my kid. Nobody will. Are um, you kidding? Oh, my goodness. Yeah. So, um, later that incident happened when she jumped out of my window, this person was trying to get after her. Uh, I now see what these people were, you know, uh, from the stuff I've gone through. And, um, and I know it was the enemy, you know, um, but we'll get to that later. Uh, but anyway, she ended up at the hospital. They said she had uh, hepatitis. Um, okay, but she, she wasn't, she was able to come home. There was nothing that was going to of stopping her and then later her heart had stopped and they don't understand why but they caught someone trying to put something in her IV and uh, before that we know that that's what happened uh, she died of natural cause so with that we went to see my mother my grandmother and myself and my brother and doctor told them I'm sorry she passed away I ran out of hospital prime I had no idea what you know what to do with you, but I knew what life and death was at that age. And mm. I remember sitting in my sheets, smelling my mother's sheets, and watching every street, a street light that reflected a car light onto my wall, mother's wall, hoping that was her coming back home. Mm. So, um, I remember at the funeral, everyone put flowers and sand on the coffin. I didn't have a flower, so I was a little kid, I ran over to a grave and I grabbed a cat and I put it on the casket and my grandmother came up to me she goes, Miho, she's like, why did you put a why did you put your red bank in your mom's casket? There's my little red treasure chest that had full of money coins, dollars, and all kinds of stuff I had and I said, my mom doesn't have her purse, she didn't need money where she's going Aww. You know, my, mom, my grandma said, she's, she's going to be fine she's, she's, where she's going, she won't need anything she's with God so, um, I'm like, how come I couldn't see her? She's like, because up on a rocket so fast <laughs> but you know I was like wow you know but just knowing that she was in a safer place it made my it made me feel at peace so um growing up through that I ended up um, being torn from my grandparents who were taking care of me because my father wanted nothing to do with us right um, we, so we were led to believe uh, but here he finally came to get us and we treated him like like he was the enemy like we, we weren't supposed to be finally he was so bad we ran away from him and he was trying to chase us down and my family was trying to intervene and you know, it stopped him from picking us up and the court finally said he had won custody of us and we moved up to Wisconsin. Um, moved away from everything we even knew. Even our dad was a stranger to us. You know, oh the woman he was goodness. with. And moving in with her and him, it was such a abusive childhood growing up. Uh, you know, being, uh, we, I mean, every kid had soap in the mouth, I guess, growing up back then. But to the extent of what we went through, I mean, I would get thrown in a cold shower and and literally beat with a skinny leather belt in a cold shower and grabbed by the top of my hair and lifted off the ground, being whipped like an animal until I stopped crying. And I had scars on my butt <laughs> from this um, growing up. And it was all because of my bad girlfriend wanting to silence us. And he, they didn't understand that we were grieving over our, our mother and we weren't allowed to cry for her. So that was beat out of us. Oh. And I now, now who was doing room. the beating? My dad. The only one we had left. The one who was abusive? Yeah, my, well, my dad, yeah. He, he was doing the beating to us and through his girlfriend's command. He was her enforcer. Oh, gotcha. So, so he was taking her lead. Mm -hmm. You guys would get in trouble for nothing just because right. she was stirring the pot all the time to make life right, exactly. miserable. Oh, that is so sad. I had something in my eye once and she put alcohol in my eye. Oh! You know, to create burn. Um, you know, um, my, my sister had a, 
she slammed her head into the faucet of the tub, you know, and she had a, almost like a three-inch scar underneath her lip, you know. I mean, she got me once I had scars in my head, and just a lot of stuff, you know, um, that we went through growing up with her. And then her daughter, growing up with them, um, started molesting me. Oh, gotcha. And the little room, and, um, you know, every time they left somewhere, she would watch us and that would happen. Which means uh, they so were probably molested too. Wow. Oh, yeah. My, yeah. So my dad, we weren't allowed to say anything. Um, we were in their home. You know, we were, in, we were strangers and we were even our dad. Um, so then as I got older, uh, my dad kicked me out. So they split up. We moved around a lot and a lot. And I'm like, we moved around worse than GI Brat. Mm. And uh, finally, we, um, I left. My, my dad kicked me out when I was 13 years old. He was with another woman. And that was an abusive relationship um, as she was towards us, but not so much anymore because we were older. And um, I stuck up for my older sister. She was got she got in a fight with my sister, and I kind of split them up, and her son did too. And my father came over, he held me, and she came over and slapped me. And then all of a sudden, I instinctively was like gritted my teeth, my jaw. She, my dad punched me in my mouth and told me to get out of there. You kicked me out right then and there. Oh um, my goodness! So then I was to the street, um, but on and off, always all the time like that. But from 13 on up, I was on my own, and. Uh, and I, in a couple of years after that, I ended up about uh, eight and 48 years in prison um, at 16, almost 16 years old uh, for a party to a crime of armed robbery. Um, I was hanging around with some people I shouldn't have been. Um, I grew up in gangs, Latin kings, uh, stuff that was just out there. And to me, I just didn't care anymore. But in essence, in my heart, no matter what I was going through, I still cared about other people. Right. I just didn't care about myself anymore. Right. And I always told people and myself, I don't fear anybody but God. I don't fear no man in this world. I fear nothing in this world but God. And he must have heard me because, uh, <laughs> because he, he was always there caring. God, God heard God. you before you ever said a word because he Amen. was he was he was connected to your pain. He saw everything mm -hmm. you went through. He was with you. He knew he had his hand on you. And that's why your salvation was so dramatic, because God knew there was a lot of scar tissue to remove, and God just did it. He just, he said, this boy has been through enough. Wow. And out of that, you know, and there's so much, you know, in between all that, that's happened, but it's too long to explain, and so right. much, but you hit it on the head. And, you know, it's like I, no matter the situations of where I was, even when I was uh, facing that 40, 80 years, I was praying and praying, and he, he shined his light through me. And these cells, you can't really see outside, but the, the light shined through. And he told me in my heart, everything's going to be all right. Mm. And I went into this waiver hearing, and it's usually 15, 20 minutes you're in, you're out. They wave you as an adult or not. And this one went for two days. Two days. And the judge said, you know, he had to really, really think about this. And he, he said he prayed about it the night before, mm. you know, with a very important decision. And he said he, he reprimanded the district attorney's office as well as the social work department because they never, he said, you failed to look into Mr. DeLeon's history to see the fact that he's never been offered probation, he's never been offered help, he's never been offered counseling, and you want to send him off as another number that he's unsalvageable? He's like, Mr. DeLeon, he goes, you are salvageable. And I commend you for seeking treatment before this happens. Wow. And I'm sorry we failed you. He's like, you're one of these individuals that slipped through the cracks of the system. I'm sorry that we weren't able to help. And I'm sorry. Mm. And mm. He's like, but you, you know, he told, he told his heart and soul. He did his due diligence and did justice right there. And he did not fail me. God did not fail me. And he never had. And, but God had to show me, put me, I truly believe everything happens for a reason. And either for my protection, for the people I had to meet, for the journey I had to be on, but he had to show me. So he sent me to a correctional facility for almost um, about three years. Uh, it was a juvenile one, but hey, I was happy to be there versus uh, 40 years minimum I was looking at. I know that's and right. I was doing cartwheels going there. <laughs> <laughs>
know, I'm not even joking. You can see the pictures of all the mug shots of the people that were my unit and the reception unit, and you can see them all sad and mean looking and hard looking, and you can see me all cheery and smiling. Yep. <laughs> yep. I know that's but, right. Uh, wow. Yeah, so. Even people there, I was still helping them, talking to them. Mm -hmm. Like, hey, why are you gonna snap? Why are you gonna go to hell? You don't need to do that. Even I'm not, amongst my own pain, but I knew that I always said to myself, better days ahead, better days ahead. Right. And there always will be. And right. And sure enough, when the first thing, when those cell doors opened, they let me out and they said, you're 18, so you can leave now. And I walked out of there, no felony, no, no probation, nothing. Just like everything was just a bad dream. Boom, there you go, open doors. And I walked out behind that fence line three rows of rays away, looking at the sky, and nothing but blue sky, and I just prayed, and I said, I saw my friends and my dad coming over, and look at my dad, I told them, asked them to tell my friends to stay over there, I had to give that, my gratitude to the Lord, I prayed, I got on my knees, and I just prayed right there, thanking him, mm. and then, uh, I came home, and on and off, on and off, I saw, uh, you know, I knew what God wanted me to do, and I knew what I had to do, I didn't know what God wanted me to do, correction. So my 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 family said, Oh, here, here's some drugs, here's some weed, here's some this, you know, no, no, I'm good. You know, come on, take it, you know, you, you deserve it, well, you, you know, it's something to get up on your feet. All right, whatever, you know, and then I knew it my my the instinct was just telling me no, uh uh. But that was the instinct, that was God's voice telling me, Don't take it. Mm -hmm. Better than that. I didn't listen. I started drinking again, partying, um, got involved with the wrong people, started partying again. Got four drunk driving throughout those, since I was 18 on up, or 21 on up, I'm sorry, uh, four drunk driving. And uh, two in one month, I was hurting. I, I had a little baby girl, she was uh, nine months old in the womb, about to be born, and she passed away in the womb. Mm. And her mom went to delivery, and that's when I started drinking again. Okay, and I gotcha. Was one years old when I lost her. and. I remember I was so mad, I went to my brother's house, and I was hurting, and I looked at my brother, and I, I looked at him, I'm like, you know what, bro, and we're both drinking, I'm like, I got something, I, got, I did something stupid, I think, I did something really bad, he's like, what's that? I'm like, I don't know, I was like, I, I kind of, I think I, I, I think I did the wrong thing, he's like, well, I know I did the wrong thing, he goes, I was like, but I don't know if it's binding, I don't know if it's legal, and he's like, what's that? I'm like, I think I sold my soul, he's like, what do you mean you sold your soul? I'm like, I think I told the I think I told Bella like, hey, if you can make my life any better, sure. Oh, and got you, got you, got you. He goes, you did too, and I'm like, oh my what? goodness. So all of a sudden we're both like, wow. We started laughing about it. And I'm like, yeah, it, 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 I didn't. I was like, I was just saying out of anger though. Right. And he's like, yeah, he, he didn't talk much about it. And I'm like, hmm, all right. So I spoke with other people about that, and they're like, well, that's, that you just said it, like, whatever, there's nothing, there's some, there's some binding way to do it, or whatever, that make it, whatever, but, so like, that's not binding, I'm like, okay, well, thank you, Lord, thank you, Lord, thank you, Lord, you know, I'm just praying, like, this wasn't, this wasn't legal binding, mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. nothing in blood, nothing in drinking some drink, or whatever, all that other garbage, but regardless, I moved on from that, and, and I only tell this because people need to be careful what they say, too. <laughs> Uh, you never know, you know, but... That's um, right, because cause sometimes you can go past the point of no return. Amen. And you do it amen. out of the heat of passion, and uh -huh. if it's legally binding, baby, whoa. Uh -huh. Now oh, listen, yeah. we're going to stop here, and we're going to go on to the next video. I love you people, but y'all attention span, you know how you guys do. You know, you get, you say, oh, we're past 10 minutes. It's time to move on to something else. So we're going to stop here so we can keep your attention. We got more videos coming. Stay tuned.